The movie opens with a narration by a nine-year-old boy, Louis Drax. According to Lewis, he's the most amazing accident-prone boy as he narrates a series of near-fatal accidents. And although most of the accidents were life-threatening, he somehow managed to outlive each one of them. Recently, Lewis was on a picnic with his mom, Natalie, and his dad, Peter Drax. But suspiciously, he falls off a cliff down into the sea. Then, we see a helicopter arriving at the scene to take Lewis to a nearby hospital. The area is surrounded by FBI agents who are there to investigate the mystery of Lewis's fall. The case is handled by Detective Dalton, the lead investigator, and her partner Elliot. Elliot informs Dalton that Peter has gone missing and considers him the prime suspect in the possible murder of Lewis. After a while, they arrive at the hospital and Natalie is heartbroken to see her son in such a condition. After examining Lewis's body, the doctor pronounces him dead and records his time of death. Meanwhile, we meet the renowned pediatric coma specialist, Dr. Alan Pascal, giving a speech about his childhood experiences of sleepwalking. On the other hand, as Lewis's body is transported to the morgue, he suddenly wakes up and is placed in intensive care in a coma. The miraculous revival of Lewis attracts the attention of Dr. Allen, who becomes the lead doctor in charge of Lewis's care. Dr. Allen meets Lewis's mother and informs her about the miracle. But Natalie doesn't seem to be surprised as Lewis's life has been filled with fatal accidents like these. Soon, we see that Lewis doesn't seem to like Dr. Perez and often gets irritated by his questions. According to Dr. Perez, Lewis seems to inflict self-harm upon himself to get attention from others. In the meantime, Dr. Allen meets Detective Dalton and learns more about Lewis's case. Dalton warns them that Peter might show up at the hospital and attempt to kill Lewis once again. Also, Dr. Allen informs the detective that even though Lewis is in intensive care, his condition is not improving. In a flashback scene, Lewis is seen with his father on a trip to SeaWorld. During their trip, Peter runs into his ex-wife Caitlin and her husband Alex. Peter requests Lewis not to tell Natalie about meeting Caitlin, but upon arriving back home, Lewis instantly tells his mother everything, which breaks into a nasty argument between Natalie and Peter. Furthermore, it's revealed that Lewis has always been a disturbed child, as he used to kill his pet hamsters by smashing them with large books. Despite Dr. Perez promising that everything Lewis told him would be confidential, he tells Natalie about his concerns regarding Peter. This leads Natalie to end the sessions with Dr. Perez. Eventually, Dr. Allen and Natalie begin to share a mutual attraction for each other. During a walk, Natalie opens up to Allen about the day Lewis fell from the cliff. She reveals that on that day, Peter got angry at Natalie for ending Lewis's therapy sessions without informing him. Peter's aggressiveness scares Lewis, so he ran away. Soon, Natalie becomes emotional after opening up to Alan and eventually ends up kissing him. Moments later, Lewis regains consciousness briefly before passing out once again. Back at the hospital, Dr. Allen performs several tests on Lewis and continues to take care of him. Just then, Allen is spooked by a strange sound and he notices a trail of black mud leading to a room. When Allen opens the room, he finds a strange creature covered in seaweed lying on the floor. But in reality, it's just Alan's nightmare as he wakes up scared, sleeping beside Lewis's bed. The next day, while playing tennis with his colleague, Alan reveals that his relationship with his wife is hanging by a string. Also, everyone at the hospital knows about Alan kissing Natalie in the garden, which worsens his relationship with his wife. Next, Natalie receives threatening letters, telling her to stay away from Alan. She's more confused when the writer of the letters claimed to be Lewis himself. Soon, Alan arrives at Natalie's home to help her with the situation, and eventually, they decide to inform the police about it. Detective Dalton believes that the letters were written by Peter and advises Natalie to be alert, as Peter might try to contact her. Dalton also warns Alan not to become involved with Natalie. Also, to keep her safe, Dr. Alan offers a hospital room to Natalie. The next day, Alan goes to visit Dr. Perez to go over more information about Lewis. Dr. Perez reveals that after his sessions with Lewis ended, Lewis sent him a hateful letter for revealing their conversation to his mother. Hearing this, Alan shows the letter written by Lewis, and Dr. Perez confirms that it was written by Lewis as he had a very particular way of speaking. The next day, Sophie brings in similar threatening letters addressed to Alan, written by Lewis. Dalton suspects that maybe Lewis himself wrote those letters, even though Alan strongly suggests that it's not possible. Dalton once again warns Alan about Natalie, telling him that Peter is not Lewis's real father. And at one point, Natalie attempted to give Lewis up for adoption. Later, when Alan confronts Natalie for lying to him about Lewis's biological father, she confesses to Alan that Lewis's real father's name is Joe and that Lewis was a result of rape. 
one thing leads to another, and despite Dalton's warnings, she and Alan end up having a steamy time together. In yet another flashback scene, it's revealed that Peter came into Natalie's life when Lewis was hospitalized due to one of his accidents. A year later, Peter and Natalie got married, which was difficult for Peter's first wife. Meanwhile, Lewis is sometimes visited by a mysterious creature covered in seaweed. He follows the creature after it promises him to show something really important. The next day, Lewis is visited in the hospital by Peter's mother, Violet. Violet and Natalie did not seem to get along with each other, and Natalie even accuses Violet of attacking her. Quickly, she notices the closeness between Alan and Natalie. Violet reveals that Peter used to love Lewis more than himself and would never hurt that boy, even though Alan doesn't seem to believe her. She even warns Alan that Natalie is unstable and manipulative and has been lying all along. Moments later, Dalton enters the scene and informs Violet and Alan that Peter's body has been found at the bottom of a cliff, having been dead for several days. Meanwhile, Lewis continues to follow the mysterious creature, and the two of them end up at the same cliff where Lewis jumped. The creature persuades Lewis to jump once again, and later Lewis follows it into a cave. Eventually, the creature is revealed to be Lewis's manifestation of Peter, who is found dead in a cave covered in seaweed. One day, Alan suddenly wakes up from a nap and has no idea what's going on. He's told by another doctor that not only did he sleepwalk during his nap, but he also wrote a prescription and threw it in the garbage can. Alan is shocked to hear all of this and asks to see the prescription that he wrote while sleepwalking. To his surprise, Alan learns that he prescribed dangerous doses of insulin and chloroform for Natalie. Alan can't make sense of the situation, so he decides to visit the federal agents in hopes of getting some answers. After reviewing the footage from the hospital security camera, the detectives conclude that the handwriting on the letters and the prescription matched. This, combined with Alan's other dreams and the suspicious letters, leads Alan to believe that while he sleeps, Lewis has somehow been controlling him and his actions. However, Detective Dalton is not ready to believe Alan's theory. She starts suspecting Alan because only a pharmacist or doctor would know the exact dosage to kill someone. But later, Dalton starts hinting that somehow Natalie is responsible for the death of Peter as well as Lewis's fall. From there, Alan goes out to meet Dr. Perez. He informs Perez about his sleepwalking incident and inquires about Lewis's relationship with his mother. However, Dr. Perez also doesn't seem to believe Alan's weird theory at first, but later, he suggests experimenting to uncover the truth. Next, we see Dr. Allen hooked up to an EKG while Dr. Perez tries to hypnotize him. Throughout the entire process, Dr. Perez gives instructions to Allen, which he voluntarily follows. One thing leads to another, and Dr. Perez manages to directly communicate with Lewis via Allen. Then Dr. Perez asks Allen about the day he fell off the cliff. Suddenly, in Allen's voice, Lewis starts revealing what happened during the picnic. We see that Natalie tries to give Lewis some candy, but refuses to allow Peter to have any making Peter suspicious. Peter continues to pressure Natalie on the candy, but she refuses to answer him, which results in a fight. Lewis then flees to the cliff edge, while Natalie and Peter follow and get into a scuffle. Once there, Peter tries to talk some sense into Natalie and requests her to move away from the edge. Somehow, Peter manages to get Lewis away from the edge and asks him to go wait in the car. Upon realizing that Natalie wants to hurt Lewis, Peter starts shouting at Natalie. In the heat of the moment, Natalie pushes Peter off the cliff to his death. Meanwhile, Lewis watches the entire scene unfold before his eyes and becomes numb for a moment. Natalie slowly asks Lewis to come toward her, but instead, he walks off the edge of the cliff on his own in an apparent suicide attempt. At this point, Lewis's heartbeat suddenly stops and Alan wakes up. The medical staff nearby immediately runs towards Lewis to attend to this situation. It's now revealed that Natalie is responsible for Lewis's accidents all this time. She's been doing things like poisoning his candy, electrocuting him while near a socket, and smothering him with a pillow. Fortunately, Alan succeeds in restarting Lewis's heart while Natalie looks on. Next, we see Alan moving out after separating from his wife. From there, Alan goes to visit Natalie, who has been placed in a psychiatric ward under Dr. Perez's care. Perez explains to Alan that he's diagnosed Natalie with Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Victims of this condition often harm others, especially children, in hopes of gaining love and affection. Later, it's shown that Natalie is now pregnant, presumably with Alan's child. In the final scene, we see Lewis's grandmother reading bedtime stories to an unconscious Lewis induced in a coma. Once again, Lewis starts narrating and explains that nine is his lucky number, and his ninth life is the best one so far. 
He then begins wondering whether being in a coma forever is bad, as it allows him to stay with his father. Peter's voice, however, tells Lewis that the world is beautiful and he needs to grow up and live his life. At last, the movie ends as Lewis finally awakens from his coma. The end. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. If you fancy more videos, check out this video now.